Aha, we are live. This is Call Talks, two year anniversary, live. What? what? <laughs> Congratulations, you've done two years. Now for another 1,000 more years on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. We'll see. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to figure out where I put my, um, my theme music, because I'd like to use my theme music for this. Let me see if I can find that. Do, 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 do. Oh, I know. I can use the... I can Hello. use the... Oh, Rowan here. Hi, Rowan. I can't hear you, though. My theme music. Whoa, I'm here. Hello. Is that Sarah? Yeah. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, so many people. I'm trying to find, is this my theme music? Let's see here. Let's try that. You want to say hi? Come Say hi, I guess. Fine, you can just sleep there. Your room. I can't wouldn't leave my room. Your room looks so cool. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, I've just got this very boring red wall. <laughs> Dramatic. I like that color though. It's cute. Thank you. I found my theme music and it's playing now, so I'm gonna say this this is now the official start <laughs> of my, okay. my two year okay. celebration thingy. Um, cool. Can you hear the music? Cool. No. <laughs> I can't hear the music. I hear it like a little no. bit. How about now? Awesome. Okay, so um, every two hours or so, I'm going to try to announce who I am and who all my guests are, so that way I can break this up into two-hour segments for my podcast. <laughs> okay. So this... This is my Paul Talks two-year youtube anniversary live YouTube show. I'm Paul Roth. Paul Talks is my channel, and I'm joined by a couple of my guests, my friends and guests already. Um, Karen, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi. Um, I've got a YouTube channel called Karen Talk, and uh, I do skits, vlogs, funny stuff. At least I try to be funny. And we met at VidCon, and we just hit it off. So here I am. Hooray. Sarah? Uh, hi, I'm Sarah, and I have a YouTube channel called Probably Sarah, and I talk about books and Harry Potter stuff and sometimes YouTube culture a little tiny bit, so, yeah. And I haven't been to VidCon yet, but I'm going this year. Yay. Good. Hooray, I will see you there. And now I'm going to make the music go away. I turn that off. Someone is joining. Yes. Hello, Rowan? Hi. I can hear you now. Oh, yeah. Hey, Rowan. Hello. On your screen it says Josia, though. Is that okay? I yeah. have no idea why it's doing that. It is like some old Google account that's linked to my actual YouTube. I have no idea how to change it. Oh, no. Oh, well. <laughs> so it looks like right now I'm not getting any feedback um, when I'm talking, so I'm going to take my earphones off. Is this okay? Yeah. 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 Excellent. Uh, oh, I forgot. I forgot to introduce my dog. That's Drew. <gasps> She's adorable. normally not allowed in bed, so this is a weird experience for her. She's like, "Am I allowed to be here? <laughs> <laughs> Run away? Am I in trouble? Is this a trap?" Oh. Uh, Rome. The rest of us have already gone around and introduced ourselves. Do you want to introduce yourself as well? Yeah. Sure. Um. I'm Rowan. Uh, unlike apparently what it says below, I am Rowan and not this made-up name that we had to make up for Google. Um, I do some videos, and they are about things that are very random. I wish I had a really pithy, like, I make videos about this, but it's not happening anytime soon. <laughs> that is all right. I forgot, to, I forgot that we... It would probably be interesting for people to know where we are from. Uh, I am from the Washington, D.C. area. Um, how about you, Karen? 
Um, originally Ireland, moved over when I was five to the, oh, wow. uh, yeah, uh, to like, um, Ohio area. Sarah? Uh, I am from Southern California, so, yeah. Awesome. And I'm boring. <laughs> um, I'm from London, in, born in London, here forever, never leave, sucked in. Good plan. Excellent. <laughs> I think Lindsay's trying to join us. Lindsay, are you are you there yet? I am here. I'm just trying to figure it out. Okay. It's Looks like confusing. your camera's not working, but we can hear you, which is yeah, fifty fifty percent good. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Um, how do you, how did you guys join in with the camera? Uh, my camera was just uh, automatically live. Yeah. Um, but if you if you hover over the top of your screen, there should be little controls for. Uh, inviting people, microphone, camera, volume. Oh, oh there we oh, go. Yay. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello. So the rest of us already did this, but I'm going to ask, I'm going to put you on the spot, Lindsay. Um, tell us who you are, what your channel's about, and where you're from. Ah. All right. Um, hi, guys. My name is Lindsay, and my channel name is Miss Lynn's Vlog. Um, and I do a lot of talk about, like, social justice issues, um, like feminism stuff. Um, I talked about like the YouTube abuse that went on a few months ago, and um, I'm from Massachusetts, so that's me oh, right cool. there. Yeah. Very nice. Awesome. I'm just going to Instagram out the beginning of this. Ah, oh, gosh. Um, so if we ever, if you ever need to take a break for whatever reason, but we want to come back, you can go up to the top of the screen and do a mute. That's uh, clicking on the microphone. That'll turn off your microphone. If uh, if anyone else is going to take over the camera for a moment, I can give the focus to them. Like I'm going to go to Rowan, Karen, Lindsay, Sarah, back to me. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I've Instagrammed it out. I think I have blown up the social media as much as I can. I've never tried to do this with so many people, so I have no idea how this is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting to say the least. Yeah. It will. Yeah. Um, oh, I know what I was going <laughs> to This is really, really ridiculous, but I'm going to DM Carly Rae Jepsen and ask if she wants to join in. Um, hold on oh a moment. Oh, my God, that's ambitious. <laughs> He's following me. I mean... We'll see what happens. I'm hopeful. If you, uh, if you, uh, if you have the um, actual ch show, the public um, side of the video open, in another mm -hmm. window, uh, obviously turn off the volume for that video. Mm -hmm. There's already a chat going on over okay. there. I see Scozio, Mark Hilton, some German dude. All right. I'm going to Oh, I recognize them from like previous ones. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, I can't get a link. Yeah. <laughs> exciting. Where is it? <laughs> so let's see. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Here we go. All right. Okay. Harley cool. Ray Jepsen is still following me. I'm DMing her right now. Here we go. It wasn't a mistake. Wait. She meant to do it. Okay, wait. Yeah, why is Carly Ray Jepsen following you? <laughs> uh, I I had tweeted out uh, one of um, a cover of her song. I think the I think it was the one done by Sarah Close, um, mm. who is a British YouTuber slash singer slash musician. Um, mm -hmm. I tweeted that out. And I said I liked this cover of Carly Ray Jepsen's uh, song. Carly Ray Jepsen's song. And then all of a sudden she was following me. <laughs> oh, sorry, Paul. By the way, uh, I think you either you either like accidentally unfollowed me or were never following me. But I couldn't reply to your Twitter DMs because it said uh, you weren't following me. So yeah. that's why I wasn't replying to those and was tweeting at you instead. Gotcha. Uh, that happened with um, Orla Joe as well. Uh, we were following each other last night when I sent her messages about this, and this morning we are not following each other. So that Twitter thing is real, apparently. I don't know. Yeah, I I was like, oh, maybe maybe he just like never followed me, and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, I just unfollowed. Okay. That and then I send in the show. As soon as I send these DMs, Carly doesn't gonna unfollow me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! I have we a ten-year-old sister like... though. If she joins this, she's gonna be really happy. Let me see here. 
Sure enough, I'm not following you today, Sarah. I am so sorry. I'm following you now. So oh, it's totally fine. I think that if Carly Rae Jepsen comes, we should definitely do like a sing along. Yes. I'm already planning yeah, on it. Like my harmonies are yeah, ready. I, I've got the karaoke version of the song queued up, so we can sing along together. <laughs> All of us involved here. Oh wow! I this is happening. It's it's, it's yeah. Really this real. is a big deal. It's happening. I'm a little overwhelmed, but it's so cool. <laughs> Thank you all for joining me. This is amazing that so many people have agreed to do this with me. That's so fun. Oh, gosh. Um, I know that I met Karen at uh, VidCon, we, as she already mentioned earlier in this uh, conversation. Um, I feel like Lindsay I met, I, is, the next, is the person I've next known next longest. And I think I met you, like, November or October of last year. Around that time, yeah. Um, and I think it was probably because we were both blogging about similar social issues, maybe? Yes, about um, YouTube abuse, I think. That's right. That's right. So I'm going to be doing this for eight hours. I've got, I've got my protein drink, I've got a bottle of water, and another bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> I'm set. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. I don't, remember how I, um, I don't remember how I started following you, Rowan. Do you remember? I have no idea. I feel like I should know, but I have no clue. Hmm. I should have a notebook to keep track. And Sarah, you're, yeah. a recent, you're a recent connection of mine. Um, yeah, very recent. Well, I've only been on YouTube for like four months. or I should know this. Four or five months. Well, that is very impressive. I know that I... Um, I feel like maybe I found you, Sarah, through one of somebody else's videos. Like they said, here is a person that you should check out. I think, I think I actually it actually might have been like one of Rowan's videos. To be honest, I remember us having some sort of internet <laughs> connection. Something, something like that. Okay, I think my cat wants out of my room, so I'm just gonna open the door one sec. Woo! Okay, um, we can take questions from the people in the chat, and just gonna let them know that we are like actually paying attention to the chat. Hi, chatters. I see you. Welcome. Oh, so uh, just yeah. some German dude apparently is giving us advice for Rowan to change her name. Mm. You know, I'm oh. I've been trying. That was. And I haven't set up my lower third, so I got to do that. Hold on a second while I do this. Do do do. Um, bump. I'm going to say that I am um, in my location, Washington, D.C. And on and mirrored. There we go. Ooh. Ha ha. That is oh, me. How did you, wait, how did you do that? I can't. If you I go over to the uh, left side of your screen, there are a bunch of icons that will pop up. Yep. One of the icons looks like a little toolbox, and it's for the Hangout Toolbox. Okay. And then that'll show up on the right side of your screen, and the first option under Hangout Toolbox is for you to customize your profile, as uh, displayed in this, in this show. Mm -hmm. And I just put in my lower third, and then I did a mirror of it. Ha-ha. Oh, okay. Ooh. I can change it, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've gone around the system. Excellent. Okay, so I'm also going to be watching my tweets and stuff to see what's happening over there. Lots of stuff. Bop, 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 bop. Hooray. Okay. All right. Uh, so... I'm very excited to be here. Two years. I, I, really, I really didn't think I'd be able to last this long, but apparently I have. And, um, you know, I, I've, from the very beginning, I've, I've done this vlogging thing on YouTube in order to connect with people and maybe offer them some of my perspectives, experiences, opinions about hopefully somewhat important things in life, but also be entertaining. Uh, and through doing those videos, I'm able to connect with people like you. My friends are joining me in the show. It's so exciting. All right. So for whatever reason, uh, the am I getting some weird feedback? I don't know. Oh, wait. 
for whatever reason, like my thing, when it, it's only connecting to my private Google account, so I'm not going to bother with that. <laughs> that is okay. That's That's, that gives the wrong information. Apparently, uh, according to just some German dude, Carly Rae Jepsen is following 92,000 people, so maybe I'm not Aww. as special as I wanted to believe. You want a special 92,000. <laughs> That's all right. We can still do a sing along if people want to do it. I've got the song queued right up on the uh, on the okay. page. <laughs> Ready to dance. Ready to dance. Yeah, absolutely. It was. I was dancing around to it in the shower. I almost killed myself. It was great. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Uh, Catherine the nineteen in the chat says uh, is starting us off with the first question, which is, what is everyone's current favorite book? Uh, I'm gonna go last. Oh. Uh, so who wants to go first? You look behind me. All of them? Ev everyone. <laughs> I can probably read you from here. Oh, as well. gosh. Anybody? Uh, right. Hmm. That's this such is, a hard question. This is always my favorite, so I have to go to it. It's the um, Atonement, the Ian McEwan book, which I don't oh, mind having the film cover for because the film was excellent as well. I don't have um, my copy of my favorite book currently, uh, but my favorite book that I've read recently is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart, which was really good, in my opinion. That and has then, a John Green seal of approval on it. Ooh. It does. Um, I'm getting nice little messages from my friends saying that they'll be able to join in later. Hooray. Oh, yay. Hey. Not Carly Rae, but everybody else. Oh man. <laughs> What a jerk. <laughs> She's paying attention to 92,000 other people. It's not just us. <laughs> uh, so let's see here. So anybody else want to go with their favorite book right now? Um, I would say my favorite book right now is probably Catcher in the Rye. I just finished it, finally. Um, oh, that's, that's good. Very, good it's very indie of me, but... <laughs> I like it. Well, that also has the John Green seal of approval. Okay, does anybody here like a book that John Green hates? Just out of curiosity. What books does John Green hate? <laughs> I don't think he hates any. That might be a problem. <laughs> I know I own a ridiculous amount of John Green books, if you want to see that. Like, it's really Very sad. True. I own... I, own. Uh, I see that Sam Tistic has joined the chat. Hi, Sam. I think it's Sam. Sam Tistic. Um, These are all my John Green books. <laughs> wow. I own four copies of The Fault in Our Stars. Oh my gosh. That's, That's a the collection. <laughs> I'm super ridiculous like that. That is excellent. Um, when I was in high school, I went to the library, the high school library. I read every single John Green book in a few months. And then I was told by the librarian that they wanted to do a read poster. So basically, I'm sitting there holding the fault in our stars with the uh, like clouds around me, and it just says "read" over it, and it's in my school library. So <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> That's very cool. That's very cool. Oh, yeah. Catherine, <laughs> Catherine the nineteenth just tweeted out to Carly Rae that she should join her live chat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get banned on Google on you Twitter is what's gonna happen. I think yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna lose my Twitter account. Um, did you hear from uh, Lindsay about a favorite book? Hmm, my favorite book has always been I think Into the Wild by John Krakauer. Ooh, I it's don't know anything about that book. You've never heard of that book? I have not. It's really good, um, but it's very sad. I don't want to spoil it. I would suggest reading it. Um, it is a true story about this boy who, after college, he throws away all of his material items and he goes to live in the wilderness. So, it's very good, though. Yeah. Oh, I think I know which one you're talking about. It's very yeah, cool. it's, it's really sad, but it's very good. I haven't heard of this book, but it sounds really interesting. Yeah, I read it in high school. Not a big fan of it, but... I can understand the appeal, definitely. Well, I mean, like, who's, who's a fan of a book they read in high school, you know? That's like, fair. <laughs> well, I'm a fan of many of the books that I read in high school, but none of them were actually assigned to me in high school. <laughs> <laughs> the ones that's that's I what I mean. Like. Yeah. All right, so I pulled out my two favorite books here. 
Uh, again, it's kind of a tie all the time. I go back and forth a little bit. Uh, one of them is the... Can you see the... the yeah, yeah, there you go. Is the, the City of Truth by James Morrow. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can see, it's a very short book, but it's the idea is that it's a, uh, a sci-fi story about literally a, a city where people are um, kind of programmed from a very, very early age, from like baby age forward, not to be able to lie. If they try to lie, it feels hurtful to them. They can't do it. Um, so they're conditioned oh, not weird. to be able to tell a lie. Uh, wow. and, the, uh, and the story is great because it starts off by having... Um, having you uh, follow along with the protagonist and uh, his experiences. And he does things like he's married, but he sees an attractive woman, and he feels compelled to tell her, I find you attractive, even though I'm married. Stuff like that. And you see lots of different consequences of this, but the, the crux of the story comes when the protagonist's child gets sick, like fatally sick. And so um, he doesn't want to tell his kid that they're going to die. And he actually goes into, like, he finds, like, he found like a rebellion um, underground. Okay, my stupid iPod decided it wanted to listen to me. Um, sorry. <laughs> the, uh, he, so he's done, he doesn't want to tell his kid that his kid's going to die. So he tries to find like this rebellious underground sect where they are trying to rebel against society by learning, by teaching themselves how to lie again. Um, and that's basically what he does. He tries. He, he learns how to lie, so he doesn't have to tell his child that they're going to die. Um, that's a really horrific but cool premise. Yeah, and then the other book that is one of my favorites. Is let's see if I can get this better. Here we go. The Soul of Anna Klein by Terrell Medaner, I think his name. I think is the name. Uh, and this story, it's, again, it's like a parent and child sort of thing. That seems to be a theme for me. Uh, is a story about how a a man raises his daughter to be free of lots of the misconceptions of, um, I don't know, uh, traditional misconceptions, things like believing in a soul, things like um, believing in various religions, things like, um, I don't know, believing in superstition. He tries to teach his daughter about all these things that are actually real in life versus the things that people uh, may have faith in but can't be proven, proven as real. And, um, and then... And she's great. She's a genius. She's really figuring out how to um, understand the world and lots of different things. She learns very quickly. And then she's diagnosed with brain cancer. And so, oh my god! <laughs> and so, um, uh, what he wants to do is he wants to teach her how to think about things differently, so that she can basically work around the brain cancer and like make better use of the rest of her brain. I'm kind of shutting down the part that has the cancer uh, so that she can be uh, healthy that way. Um, but in order, to, in order to do that, he needs to tell her exactly what parts of her brain fire when she's thinking about different things. So he tries to find someone who will do like an MRI of his daughter while she's thinking about different things, talking about different stuff, to see where um, her thoughts uh, would cross over with the brain cancer portion. So he does that, and he teaches her, okay... You know, we've gone through some very strict training on how to think about things. I want to teach you now to not think in those spaces of your brain so that your brain cancer basically just starves to death. Um, but which I don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna work or not, but that's the that's his premise of the parent. Uh, unfortunately, the the MRI technician who did the scan of her brain uh, doesn't buy any of this. And so they say, we're going to call Child Protective Services because you are letting your child die of cancer. Uh, and then they, and they take the child away, and they perform surgery on her to remove the cancer, after which they say that she has a completely uh, clean bill of health. This is all still like the premise setting up to the story, essentially. Oh, God. <laughs> what? And at this point, she comes back to live with her father again, now that her brain cancer is removed. And he thinks that she's a different person. And so the reason for the story title, The Soul of Anna Klain, is that he thinks that by going into her brain and removing a chunk of her brain, they have damaged and or removed her soul. And so you know, even though she acts like a perfectly normal human being, she doesn't act like the kid that she was before. Um, mm -hmm. And then the entire rest of the story is just like talking about different experiences and trying to figure out what makes, what makes for the validity of a soul um, is there a soul-brain connection? Do robots who don't have traditional souls, can they develop souls? Stuff like that. It's like, and it's, again, 
it's a very short book, so it's kind of <laughs> densely written, but they go into to a lot of different ideas. You got some oh deep. God. Uh, yes. Yes. But I, you know, I also have, I also have, from my, one of my favorite authors, Terry Pratchett. Oh, there goes my dog. You know, I also have Where's My Cow? So, it's not, <laughs> it's not like that's all I think about is, is deep stuff. I mean, what, the cow is also probably very important. Where is the cow? Good question. Actually, Where's My Cow is a uh, picture book that is used by a police officer to teach his kid about um, questioning what people say. Nice. Wow. Uh, okay, so at this point we've talked about one question. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Emily says that it can't, she can't join, so I'm going to see if I can send over to Emily... I wonder if we are full up. I wonder if we can't have any more people join in. Oh no! No! I don't know, but I'm gonna see. But it's possible that I just sent her the wrong link, so I'm gonna try sending her the link again. Um, please talk amongst yourselves. I'm just looking at the comments on the video. Um, yeah, same. Like yeah. different people's books that they're liking. I have this. Um, just some de German dude is saying about like non-fiction, more non-fiction stuff, um, like film directing books and stuff. Kind of cool. Uh, you know, I do um, film for school, like that's my major, and I was actually just talking about this to my girlfriend. Nobody has ever gotten me like a film book, and I've always wanted one, but like for birthdays or anything, okay. never. So sad. Yeah. My like, my mom's a screenwriting teacher, so I'm, like, surrounded by film books. Wow, that's so <laughs> cool. She wrote a book. Um, I've currently... Well, I don't have film. I did theatre was mine. And I literally have non-fiction books literally around me on the floor. Like, ooh, look at these. If people <laughs> have recommendations for amazing fiction, uh, non-fiction theatre books, these are the two best, in my opinion, for, like... Uh, devising immersive theatre and stuff, which is Josephine Macon's immersive theatres and Gareth White's audience participation in theatre. It's kind of a lot about how you can use uh, what's called applied theatre, which is like theatre through community and through therapy and stuff, to create immersive experiences um, that are... These were written like last year and the year before, so very modern, kind of at the forefront of what people are doing with immersive theatre and participatory theatre where the audience are part of the creation. So, w random, very specific recommendations from Rowan there. <laughs> I own a ton of photography books because that's what I'm into. Cool. But, I don't know. It's like, I, they're all like, they're, they're mostly pictures. <laughs> The dumbest thing. I mean, photography. <laughs> the whole point. Um, let's see here. Uh, Francie says that potentially ten people can join in, so that's not that. I guess there's a problem with Emily's uh, computer. Oh, I hope that gets worked out. Um, yeah. Thing, oh, uh, Lindsay. Um, I didn't. <laughs> I did a quick search for Into the Wild. I I know about that. That was made into a movie. I knew about the movie as well. Yeah. Ooh. Never seen the movie, um, but read the book. It's definitely really good, something that you should check out, if that sounds interesting. I mean, it sounded familiar when you were describing it, but I was trying to... I think that I was... I think as... I think maybe Francie was doing... I was confusing it with Into the Woods, but I was like, that's not Into the Woods, so I don't know what it is. <laughs> but as soon as I saw the poster for the movie, I saw, you know, the, the guy on top of the uh, minivan there. Yeah. Um, I immediately remembered what that was about. Ah. Um, but, but, so, so I'm going to try... I'm going to try to remember to look at the chats... And uh, see the questions that are coming in over there. I've got my Twitter set up over here, and Braden said to have a good live stream. Thank you, Braden, if you ever watch this. I am trying to have a good live stream, and it's going so well so far. This is great. Yay! Yay. Oh. Uh, if we do actually address any of the questions from the chat, since the chat is not uh, captured at all when this video, this live stream, um, gets saved afterwards, we should probably like actually recite out who asked the question and what question they asked in the video oh, yeah. so that everybody knows what's going on if they watch it later on. Oh, sounds good. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Stacks, Emily. Okay, that's everybody there. And then, uh, okay, so earlier, Catherine the 19th asked the controversial question. Is it controversial? I don't know if you care. Uh, she oh, yeah. said that John Green has a history of occasionally saying things in a problematic fashion. Do we have a? Uh, do we have any thoughts on that? Ooh. Despite my, wait, Ooh. sorry, is someone else going to talk? I don't know. Sarah, uh, you can take it. Like, despite my very large collection of John Green books, which I've kind of, it it's almost like an accident that I have so many. Um, I do understand that within kind of like just the Vlog Brothers like Nerdfighter community, there have been some small cases where things have been like, oh, I, I don't know how okay that is. Um, but I, ah, so hard to word. Like, I recognize the flaws with, like, John Green and, like, his books, even sometimes, but I think that most of the time it's actually, like, recognized later on. I can't think of any, too many, like, particular instances, though, where something's been, like, super problem problematic. Well, I think that I this situation that I recall is that um, he made some sort of comment that kind of blew up on Tumblr. I, I, if I give him the benefit of the doubt, I'm going to say that it was sarcastic and he was joking, but it sounded like he was being serious where he said something like, in my story, the girl kisses the boy. Does that ever happen? That never happens. You know, right, I, I remember that. Oh, I do remember that. Tons of YA that. stories yeah. have had girls kiss the boy first. <laughs> Tons of YA stories have had girls kiss girls first. Tons of YA stories have had boys kiss yeah. boys first. So, mm. you know, that was a problem. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I think that it's... I, th I You know, my... Actually, does anybody else want to go first? Because I'm going to say some stuff. But th does anybody else want to talk about the uh, about John Green's um, occasionally problematic speech? Um, personally, for me, um, I am not, like, a nerd fighter, So I don't really know that fandom very well and what John might have said. So, like, what are other examples? Uh, enlighten me, if you could. I, I can't think of any other examples off the top of my head. Those, that was the big one. Okay. Uh, I remember when I when that happened, I did actually look through, like, your fave is Problematics Tumblr and I think a couple other sites to find other stuff that John Green has said, and there were other examples. <laughs> I just don't remember them. I feel like I remember one time when someone basically asked if he'd be interested in doing, because he does a lot of romance in his books, like an, a queer romance as the main focus, and he slightly dismissed it by being like, oh, well, I had a, a gay character in Will Grayson, Will Grayson. And it didn't actually address the idea that, like, oh, maybe if you actually did a queer romance, this would become a very mainstream book. You could actually do quite a lot of good with that. Um, mm. But that's the only, that's the kind of thing that I think I've picked up on myself, things that he said that I've been like, eh, maybe not. Yeah, I've, I've definitely um, picked up on that before, and I'm not... Yeah, I haven't been. I was like, "Oh, that's not good." Like, yeah, I mean, that's that's definitely not good. Uh, I mean, my perspective is that the Green Brothers are fellows who are in their thirties or older, and uh, they're getting older, and they've had a lifetime of living in their safe, fairly well-off white privilege as straight men. Um, mm -hmm. That does not make a person a bad person, but that means that they've gotten experiences that shelter them from a lot of realities outside of their own. And so I actually think that Hank and John are trying pretty hard to learn about a lot of different things outside of their privilege. Um, mm -hmm. Hank, Hank has done some really great stuff talking about racism, for example. That was great. Oh, yeah. Hank, Hank is, like, really good. He did a video on sexuality, and, like, as... Like, prior to starting anything about it, he was just like, I come from a place of privilege. Like, I'm, mm. I'm talking, and he was talking about it more from, like, an almost scientific standpoint rather than trying to apply much of, like, himself to it, which, like, it was more of an educational thing is yeah. what I'm trying to say. And I, and I think and, you're, you've uh, hit the nail on the head right there, which is the difference in their approaches. So Hank, he's the sciencey nerdy guy, and John is the... Yeah you know, more literary arts word, words guy. Hank is more used to saying, well, I, I, will be, I will say that I'm wrong when there's evidence that I'm wrong. Hank is used to saying that. That is like the whole point of science is to say that you're wrong yeah. when you've proven that you're yeah. wrong. 
And so right. he, as he learns stuff about what he's been safe in within this privilege, he adjusts and he changes, and he has to struggle with it. He'll probably still misspeak, probably for a good portion of his life, because he probably didn't start learning all of these things until the, like the last decade or so. John, on the other hand, is used to living in a world that he has created with his words. He is used to his words being, you know, the thing that is important in whatever setting he's in. He, oh yeah. He's certainly learning to change. He's learning stuff alongside his brother, but he is. Mm -hmm. He's more likely to say, this is a funny thing in my head, because it's always been a funny thing in my head. I'm going to share it with everybody else, because I'm good with the words. And then if someone yeah. someone points out that some of his words are problematic, he's going to be more likely to be defensive about it. Not even like intentionally, just reflexively. Hey, now, wait a minute. I know words. I'm an author. Um, so I think, that's part, I think that's part of the reason why he comes across as problematic as he may. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, Sometimes I'm hesitant to say stuff like that only because I feel like it's on, it, I feel like I don't want to excuse it. But yeah, you do have to understand that like he he doesn't no one knows everything, you know? Like you are people are going to make mistakes. I'm 14 and on YouTube, I'm going to misspeak at some point. I have misspoke in videos and like you just have to like be like, "Oh, okay. I'm sorry." Whoops. Like that wasn't okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and and I don't think you know, there's a um, there's a very Tumblr mindset of thinking that when somebody does anything problematic, they're done. You're out. Yeah, you know, right. Half half a strike and you're out. Um, and I don't I don't think that's reasonable. I think it's good to look at how people react when they are called out on their problematic behavior. Um, mm -hmm. And John Green has certainly misspoken a couple times and had been called out about it. But I think you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think every time he'll go to his Tumblr where he has control of the words and he will write out an apology where it's actually a legit apology. Like, I messed right. up. Yeah. Not, excuse me for this. Because yeah, I ha reason. that's what, yeah, in the, yeah, when we first started talking about this, I was thinking about how I have seen um, on his Tumblr like several very long responses to things um, saying like, I was wrong to do some whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I, I run, I've run, i had to run over the years quite a lot of safe space, like physically safe spaces, and I think one of the things that it takes to have a safe space is not just a space where you assume everyone knows all of the stuff and no one's going to be offensive and that's what a safe space is, but it's about, you know, having a space in which people feel okay to ask questions about things they don't quite know about, or it's okay for someone to have to correct you and that you feel safe to say, oh, I had no idea about any of that kind of stuff, and I think that's what the Tumblr mindset oh, yeah. is, it's that you're meant to know this already somehow and not make any mistakes from the right. game. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons why I've stopped kind of posting a lot of stuff on Tumblr, just because I'm getting sick of everybody screaming at each other about things that you're not always supposed to know about. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I just feel like, not, like, specifically Tumblr, but also just, like, kind of in lots of places on the internet, mm -hmm. it's, like, how people, someone will say, like, one thing just because they literally had no idea that it was, mm -hmm. that it was an incorrect thing to say, and all of a sudden all these people are jumping on them, like, you should have known this from the day you were born, that this was a wrong thing to say, and it's just, like, calm down. Right. People learn. Mm -hmm. And as long as you can actually learn and then, like, it, as long as you can learn from your mistakes and then apply them and not do it again, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, then it's okay. Yeah. Uh, one of my friends, uh, B, sent me an email uh, that she said that I should not read until this show. So I'm trying to find that email. Huh. Where did it go? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Here it is. Okay. Let me take a quick scan of this and see if I want to read this out to everybody. <laughs> um, I mean, this is really nice. I, I This is... Uh, this might be too complimentary. Um, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> this, is, this is my day, damn it. I'm going to take a day for myself. Oh, yeah. Um, so my friend B says, Dear Paul, congrats. You've been YouTubing for two whole years. YouTubing as in sharing your thoughts and your soul 
and your singing voice and your fears with about a thousand people, that's not an easy thing. Especially when you think about the subject matter you usually discuss in your videos. You stand up for people. You aren't afraid to identify as a feminist. You seem to always be there for all of us. You are YouTube's personal healthcare companion. Ah, I'm Baymax. <laughs> um, I think I speak for all of us Paul Talkers when I say that you are a force of extreme good in this community, but I also want to speak for myself here real quick. <laughs> and then she says, this is going to get sentimental. I've only been here in your community for a portion of these two years, but even so, I have become so much more confident in myself because of your feedback. I've learned how to push myself to be even more empathetic. I've learned are the key words here. I've learned so much from you, and that's what matters to me. Thanks, mm -hmm. Paul, and congratulations again. And love, B. That's sweet. Cool. That's really sweet. So Thanks, sweet. B. And we've got a new person joining our show. Oh, new person! Hello. Hello. New person, new person, new person. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Peter. Hey, everybody. It's me. Ah. Hi, Peter. Hey, Peter. Uh, Hi. Peter, you want to tell everybody um, about yourself, your show, your channel, rather, and uh, where you're from right now? Yeah, for sure. So I'm Peter. Uh, I have this channel called Go Verba Now. I also have a, I have a vlog, but we, we don't speak of the vlog. Um, although I think that's how Paul found me. But my other channel is called Go Verba Now. And what it is is basically I spent uh, four months last year traveling around the U.S. and uh, Canada and Europe. And I was talking to and interviewing educational YouTube EDU folks. So like uh, DFTBA folks, um, the guys from PBS Digital Studios, a few of the, the lone wolves out in Europe and all that jazz. And I took those interviews and I edit them and I upload them to my channel and they're up there. So on the off chance that you are curious, feel free to go check them out. It's go verb and noun, like go fly a kite or go whatever, but not with actual verbs and nouns. Thanks, Peter. Hey, no problem. Ah, oh, and I'm so glad that you're joining me for my two-year uh, YouTube anniversary. Uh, I've known Peter, yeah, I think through your vlog, um, and I think it's been, well, it's certainly been over a year because I knew you before last VidCon. Uh, yes, that's true. Yeah. Uh, and Peter was, Peter was like the person who knew everybody that I wanted to talk to at VidCon, essentially. <laughs> like, every time I'd see him walking through the convention center, he'd be walking with, like, Lindsay Doe or, like, Lacey Green or, like, the, the Green Brothers or somebody. Oh, my uh, God. That's cool. Yeah, that's awesome. so... <laughs> Lindsay and I are actually, uh, and I'm assuming everybody here knows who Lindsay is, just because everybody should. Um, she and I, yes, explanations channel. Yeah, so she and I are friends in real life, separately from YouTube. So yeah. She's oh, cool. Yeah. And Peter drove me around <laughs> VidCon. Well, he drove me from the LAX to VidCon and back, which was really sweet of him. Thank you so much, Peter. Hey, no problem. I got you back. Yeah. Uh, so, so far we've talked about um, our favorite books and um, John Green uh, occasionally saying problematic things, but, you know, doing decent apologies for those when those happen. Uh, and we are now look, um, we've got the, uh, the actual viewer um, YouTube page up in a separate window so we can look at people's chats going on over there. Uh, it looks like we lost Catherine the 19th because she had to do homework, which is a good thing for people to do, their homeworks. You will lose me eventually to homework. Yeah, same. Yeah. I have something to do at 12 tonight, so... <laughs> well, that's fine. I appreciate all of you helping me start off this thing, because I was, of course, afraid that nobody would show up. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is immediately how YouTube is better than, than um, offline life for me, because when I've held parties offline, I'll get, like, one person to show up. So this is better. This is the party. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, we got an interesting comic, comic, comment um, from I, Sam Stick. I I don't know how to say your username. Please tell me how. Um, but it says I feel like John Green sometimes forgets that he's writing about adults and not teenagers. Mm -hmm. So I felt like that was a good point. That's a fair point. Uh, and I saw on Twitter that um, my dear friend Fran of Fran Just Fran isn't feeling that great, so she won't be joining us on camera, but she will be Aww. commenting uh, along with us soon, which is very cool. Um, I've also gotten messages via direct message that several people are going to be showing up later on, so that's going to be exciting. Yay. 
Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Um, so you're all my you're all, I consider all of you to be essentially my friends. I mean, I, I don't know Sarah terribly well, but the rest of you I've been talking yeah. to for a while. Um, um, do you have any questions for me that you'd want to ask of me as a friend? Hmm. Will you donate a kidney? <laughs> Not exactly to me, but just in general. I mean, if I ever needed it, would it be on the table or? Yeah, absolutely. My okay, kidney good, good. because they don't drink any alcohol. <laughs> uh, so I'm in pretty. I, I'll I'll have a, a healthy kidney to donate for you, uh, and I am already know. a registered organ donor. It's on my driver's license and everything. Yay! Same. Cool. Something about, you I know, know, I don't know if you know this about organ donors. If you if you agree to be an organ donor on your driver's license, uh, what that means is that they're not going to wait for you to die. They're going to wait for you to be in a fatal situation, but not yet dead. Because if you're di dead for very long, your organs will be useless. Mm -hmm. So rather than trying to save your life in, when you're in a potentially fatal situation, if you're an organ donor, they will take your organs and give them to other people. That's what that means. It's a little scary to think about sometimes, but frankly, if I were in a failed car crash and it was either, you know, save me as someone who doesn't have cognitive abilities and doesn't have communication abilities, or give my parts that are still in good shape to other people who could use them, especially kids, yeah, oh, yeah. that's that's a clear choice for me. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a question. Um, in like a few. Like, just a few bit videos back, you were doing a Warby Parker, like, glasses try-on. What are you getting the glasses? I just got a notification <laughs> that my glasses are going to be showing up on Monday. I was really Yay! hoping they would show up on this show, but they're not going to be here just yet. Um, and I, I went with kind of a compromise of which glasses that everybody else liked on me. Everybody liked the Ames, which are, like, the, uh, the frames on the top, and then, like, a little very thin, almost invisible metal frame on the bottom. Um, yeah. Everybody like those on me, so I'm gonna go with something that's similar to that. They look good on your face. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I, I I like the fact that my I like the fact that the ratio of my attendees here is pretty strongly women to men, um, but that wasn't necessarily purposeful. I I tried to contact a lot of guys that I know on YouTube um, and ask them to join in, but many of them just. Uh, don't have access or are going already scheduled to doing to do stuff like uh, my friend Tyler just said that he's not going to have access to Wi-Fi for this whole thing, so he's going to miss the anniversary. But he was like oh, no. interested in joining in. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vince might be joining in. Peter's obviously here. Uh, Neefsi might be joining in. Uh, my friend Neil might be joining in. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I say I say my friend, my YouTube friend, who I haven't actually met in real life. I was like. Hey Neil McNeil, um, we haven't really met, and this might be crazy, but would you uh, join my YouTube live stream, maybe? <laughs> nice. Oh, I have a question, sort of related to that, vaguely, um, because the first time I'm going to meet you will inevitably be at Vicom. What? And I feel like we haven't really had any kind of schedule that's specific about like what will be there. Is there a topic or a panel title or something that you like would really love to see at Vidcom? Well, last year I really enjoyed the Women on YouTube uh, panel, um, and I also liked the Talking Sex on YouTube panel, and I liked the, um, well, I, I wanted, I really wanted to like the LGBTQ plus and the diversity panels, um, and those, I, I still want to go to see those panels, and I just feel like they, they could have been structured better. I think that um, the VidCon planners didn't realize how much in demand these panels are going to be? We're going to be yeah. right. Yeah. Um, the the diversity panel in particular uh, had this. <laughs> I realize I might be doing this right now. This the the diversity panel had two Asian guys and then a couple of um a co and then some women uh, of color as well. And it felt like uh, the Asian guys were mansplaining every damn thing. So that just <laughs> pissed me off in in a room when I was supposed to be there. Attending for diversity. Um, oh. Hopefully that won't happen this year. If there's a diversity panel, uh, I'm also hoping, 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 hoping that my friend Ricky Pointer will be on an accessibility panel or maybe disability oh, on YouTube yeah. panel. Yeah. I mean, that happened so badly. <laughs> Me too. That'll be awesome. I would definitely want to go to that. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. 
I've, in addition to uh, you know Ricky, I also have my friends uh, Jessica and Bunny, um, our disabled persons who are have who, uh, experience on YouTube. Um, there is a fellow whose name I always forget, but he has this great YouTube channel where he talks about basically his whole life just being blind, but he has a YouTube channel, so he talks about different experiences that he has while being a blind person. Um, so I think there's I think there's a lot of material there that could be talked about on a panel, both for both from the uh, perspective of being a disabled person trying to be on YouTube and uh, YouTube channels themselves, YouTube itself as a platform providing accessibility for disabled people. So that would be something I'm very excited about. Yeah. Um, I'm so... I was just going to say that the uh, the LGBTQ panel would have been fantastic, except that uh, they I think they had to make the room bigger because of all the people who wanted to go to it. So it ended up being like the biggest room outside of the keynote type speeches uh, of the, of the entire event. And, he, and they ran up and they lost power. <laughs> they they oh, lost no. power. Oh, yeah. The panel. Yeah, so, they, so the panelists had to try to shout loud enough to hear, to fill, for the people in a, you know, 400-person room to be able to hear. It, oh, it, no. It was not the best. Oh, Lord. Potentially, if they've got good microphones and they've got a good space set up for it and they're prepared for it, then they could have similar panelists on a uh, LGBTQ plus panel this year, and it would be just fantastic. It would just be fantastic. It yeah. might have just been the logistics that made it feel rough for me. Um, but then my, 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 the two actual panels that I enjoyed the most were the Women on YouTube panel, which was fantastic. I held up a little, I held up like a little uh, point and shoot camera, and I, I recorded the whole thing and I put it up on YouTube, um, and it was. And then had a stellar, stellar panel cast. It had, uh, gosh, um, Haley G. Hoover, um, uh, Rosiana, Lex Ken, Lex Kenroar, Lex Croucher. Um, I think Cat uh, Black. Might have, no, no, um, Hart. Hart was on there, maybe. Um, some other people as well. So it was, it was nice. Uh, something that was actually interesting in a couple of panels. I think both the women on YouTube panel and maybe. The LGBTQ plus panel. Uh, somebody asked the question, "Why don't we have asexual representation on these panels?" And I like started clapping. Yeah, oh yeah, it's true. Yeah. So hopefully, some we'll have some um, ace or uh, arrow and or arrow representation on panels this year. Mm -hmm. I actually, I think this might have been the uh, LGBT panel for VidCon 2013, but I was I watched it at one point because um, someone had uploaded it to YouTube, like they'd filmed the whole thing. And I don't think there was any bisexual representation on there. Um, yeah, we were, people were talking about that um, in the comments section. I noticed there wasn't any bi representations. So that was kind of rough, too. Mm -hmm. But, like, we need asexual re representation a lot more, I feel, as I, well. I don't know that it was ever addressed explicitly, but um, during the Women on YouTube panel uh, from last year's VidCon, um, at one point Hart asked, am I the only gay person up here? And Haley G. Hoover said no. And the way she said it made me think that maybe she was implying that she's bi. Uh, mm. But it wasn't explicit. Uh, and you're certainly, and it's certainly important that we need to have openly represented bisexuality there as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Chelsea's in the uh, chats. Hi, C. Chelsea's. She's going to be joining us a little bit. And, she oh, cool, apparently liked, <laughs> and apparently she's liking my dog. <laughs> yeah, she's crying about your dog. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, Paul, I have a question for you. Fire away. All right, it's a bit off topic, but I'm just curious. I know that you're a vegan, correct? Through your Instagram close, post. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just wondering, like, what made you turn that way? Like, what was the day that you're like, you know what, I'm going to stop? eating meat products, etc. because I'm also a vegetarian too, so I'm just curious about that. Well, I was one of those kids where I, um, as soon as I learned early on in, in uh, primary school that beef came from cows and ham came from pigs and, you know, eggs and chicken came from chickens, that should have been obvious. That should have been obvious to me. Um, as soon as yeah. I learned about that, I felt bad about it. Like, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want to hurt animals in order to eat my... Kentucky Fried Chicken. I didn't want to. Um, but, you know, as a kid, I only had so much control over my life, and although I might protest 
about it to my parents. It really wasn't until I became a teenager that I felt that I had, you know, I had, I had the part-time job, so I had some money of my own. I could uh, go around, go places on my car in my car, well, my parents' car, but I could drive places uh, as a uh, late teenager. Um, and then in my senior year of high school, I was in the AP English class, and we had to do something like persuasive arguments was one of our assignments. So I did a persuasive argument or something or another. But two of my classmates did persuasive arguments on why it's good to be vegetarian. They did those announcements. I mean, they did those presentations. And I was very convinced, particularly because one of the uh, girls who did the announcement on, uh, sorry, a presentation on being vegetarian was the girl that I had a crush on. So I, uh, I found it very easy to become vegetarian uh, for that. And then... Um, probably like a, not until long after college. So I was just a vegetarian for like a decade. And then after college for a long time, uh, that's all I was. But, but uh, one year I started, started realizing that every time I tried to have dairy, I got sick. So oh. lactose intolerance drove me to becoming pretty much vegan. Like I'll still have a couple of animal product things here and there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, usually not... Parts of the animal, but like things that they extra, like dairy products. I could have dairy products if I need to, but I, I don't. I try to avoid it. Um, I don't mind having honey. Uh, I think that you know apiaries where bees are kept well are actually positive things, so I, I'm fine with having honey. And a couple other things here and there. Um, oh, uh, like a uh, there's um, a lot of farmers market type things in the DC area where I live, so it's easy for me to go there and get uh, eggs from actual free range chickens who are not cooped up. Um, so I'll have some eggs occasionally. Otherwise, I'm pretty much vegan because I just can't digest the stuff that I want to, that I would otherwise digest. Uh, so a, I got started for reasons of philosophy and uh, ethics and a girl, and then I kept going for ethics, and then I became almost vegan because of my lactose intolerance. That's a great answer. Yeah. Is anybody else... I know, so Lindsay, obviously, is anybody else vegetarian or vegan? I'm pescatarian. Pescatarian? I go yeah. through phases as, as I feel like it. Uh, I think the most I've ever done was, like, for a half year. And it was just because, like, ah, uh, I feel like crap. Uh, when I was younger, I dealt with overweight issues really a lot. Like, I weigh 170 now, and when I was about 13, 14, I weighed about 235. So I figured... So every now and then it just becomes a matter of like me trying to manage my weight uh, through different means. So and it's I, fun uh, different recipes. I am um, people. So many people from so many different places assume I'm vegetarian because I'm teetotal and I'm a lesbian. And so somehow that just, everyone's like, she must be a vegetarian. But I'm the, like the least vegetarian person ever. I'm literally sitting here eating like a caramel brownie as we're talking, which has the most like <laughs> dairy products in it imaginable. Um, so yeah, no, I'm not. Yeah. I tried to go vegetarian once over the summer for one week and couldn't do it. Uh, partially because I, I just, I, I like meat. Uh, and also, like you said about, uh, you said, Paul, about, like, not being, at the time, not being able to really do anything about that, because, like, you couldn't, you know, you weren't as much in control of your own food. I can't drive yet or anything, so, like, I, I have less control over that. <laughs> Makes sense. And we are joined by Francie. Francie, can you hear us? Yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. Francie, can you tell us uh, your name, uh, about your channel, and where you are calling in from? So, my name is Francie, or Franziska, and my channel is called Nice One Francie, and I'm from Germany. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, cool. Yeah. My videos are about geeky social issues, stuff, TV shows, and movies, feminism, racism, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. I remember in your La, in your YouTube Alphabet video, which was a very clever idea. I like that idea a lot. Thank I think you. you mentioned in your uh, community definition that you consider yourself part of the geeky social issues community. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Me three. Me four. <laughs> that might be this whole crowd here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, and I think I think Francie, you're also uh, are you vegetarian or vegan? I'm vegan. Yeah. All right, we've got a that's almost parody here. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, somebody in the comments, let's see here. I think it was oh yeah, just some German dude in the chats. Um, Francie, if you're not aware, uh, this is our primary window where we're talking to each other, but you can open up a second window with the viewing page for this video, and mm -hmm. then you'll see the chats over there. Okay. Um, but be sure to uh, mute the video, otherwise you'll hear us talking like a minute ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just some German dude in the chat said that he liked uh, the German, sorry, the cheap glasses that I bought just to try them on. <laughs> yes, Tommy Edison, thank you, Madman FM. Remembered the uh, knows the um, blind YouTuber that I was mentioning, Tommy Edison. Thank you. Uh, so okay, so here are the ones I got. So Zenny Optical is this place that has ridiculously cheap glasses, uh, and I wasn't sure if these would fit me. But they only cost they literally cost nine ninety five shipped with just plain glass in them. So I just bought them just to try. <laughs> I, I put this up on I think it was an Instagram. I put this up on. And it looks like this on me. Ooh. How do these look on me? Are these all right? I like them because like, they're red. I like the warm part better, but... Cool. They make your teeth look so rosy. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh, like a baby. <laughs> these, these would be... Yeah. So fresh and so clean, clean. These are more like... um. Huh. These would be more literally rose-tinted glasses... Not rose tinted lenses. That's always like been a misnomer that's bugged me. Ah. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> oh goodness. I, does somebody have motorcycles happening in the background? Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, no, no, no. Not me. No. I think it might be me too. I don't know. <laughs> I don't for once it's not me. <laughs> it's always noisy outside my windows. Uh, well, Paul, Paul, I have a question. Pick me. Pick me. Yes, Peter. Hey, Ooh. so how did you get into uh, doing swing? What was the big motivator behind that? I'm sorry, doing what? Doing swing? Like yeah, dancing? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, there is going to be a sad and predictable pattern to many of my organs. <laughs> So when I was, um, when I was, that part-time job, actually, that I mentioned previously at, at the latter years of my teenage uh, life, I got a part-time job at the Maryland Science Center in Baltimore, Maryland, where I would demonstrate various scientific principles for people out on the floor, and I'd give shows, give little shows on a little stage about, like kind of like a Mr. Science or a Bill Nye, Bill Nye the Science Guy kind of stuff, um, and uh, that was great. I had a lot of fun doing that. I, I highly recommend going to check out the Maryland Science Center um, and or working there. But while I was working there, I, uh, I encountered someone who was um, Hi, Mel. Mel's here. Melissa's here. Hi. Hi. Hello. Uh, oh, I don't know, like, anyone in this chat. <laughs> I know you. Um, I'm actually going to give you the, the focus of Melody. Melissa, hello. Hi. Hi. Can you tell everybody uh, your name, about your channel, and where you're calling in from? Um, my name's Melissa, or Mel, and my channel is Melly the Nerd, and I live in Pennsylvania. Yay. <laughs> Everybody should subscribe to Melly the Nerd because that's a she does great YouTube videos. Uh, I, I think I think that it'd be safe to say that she's also part of the geeky geeky social issues crowd. True. Nice one. <laughs> so I was talking about um, how I got into swing dancing. So I was at this part time there's a part time job at the Maryland Science Center in Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, there was a girl who worked on the like the sleepover camp part, uh, program at the Maryland Science Center. Um, so we, so as I was starting my job in the morning, she'd be finishing up her sleepover, her sleepaway camp job, and and leaving for the day, so she could go sleep. Uh, and at one point, as we were like crossing paths, like we got, we did a little bit of flirting, um, as awkwardly as a 17-year-old Paul can do. And um, at one point, as we were like crossing paths, she said, "Hey, I'm looking for someone who's going who, who would take these swing dance classes with me. Would you be interested in that?" And it's possible that there was some time between her question and my answer, but it's also possible that there was no time between her question and my answer. <laughs> I very quickly said yes. I knew nothing about swing dancing. I knew nothing about anything having to do with swing dancing. But of course I'm going to say yes. 
Yes, I will do that with you. Yes. <laughs> Uh, so we went to this local um, dance studio in Catonsville, Maryland, just outside of Baltimore, and there was, I think I, I think it was like a six-week course of classes on how to do swing dance. We took the dance class together as partners, although we rotated around with other people in the uh, during the class, and I liked it a lot. She kind of liked it. We went on to the second level of classes. I liked it a lot. She didn't care for it. I went on to the third oh. level of classes... Never saw her again. Oh, no. <laughs> fine, fine. I have, met, I have met many women dancing, uh, and while I had fond memories of her, it's okay. My heart That's is breaking for it. you. <laughs> What's that, Karen? I said my heart is breaking for you. <laughs> we can't all have as cute girlfriends as you do. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Like, you're, when your Instagram blows up with the, the photos of you and her being all cute and coupley, it is the most adorable. Oh, thank you. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Thank you. Yeah, she's the best. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Um, let's see. So we talked about books that we like, John Green, vegetarianism, my swing dancing. Uh, my dog has decided that she's just bored of all of this. <laughs> so she's over there. Um, any other questions for me? Folks, it looks like there's a there's a good one in the in window the from C. Chelsters. She want, uh, or he this person asks, can I please see a picture of this 17 year old Paul? No. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, yes. I'd like to see that. No. All right. First of all, <clears throat> are any of you familiar with the Star Trek: The Next Generation TV show? Not really. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. There is a character on that show who had a beard. His name is Riker. Oh, no. 17-year-old oh, Paul tried to have a beard. Oh, no. <laughs> it, was not good for every, it was not good for anybody. <laughs> there were photos of that. They've all been burned. As far as I know, they don't even get on the Internet. So, no. No, Chelsea, you cannot see photos of 17-year-old Paul. Just Wait. Like, just I imagine me I with, like, like, a beard. It's like, this is basically me at 17. <laughs> Wait, I have a follow-up question. Okay, when you had the beard, did you also have hair, or was it just bald? I did, and I did have hair. I did have hair. So it was like it was like this, and it was like this. <laughs> okay. That that was seventeen year old Paul, basically. Uh, it was not good. It was not good. Um, yeah, I you know I <laughs> when I the reason why I shaved my head is because uh, when I was in my early twenties. I was doing work for another job where I would drive around from place to place and fix computer stuff and computer equipment. And I went in one day to a, um, I think it was a junior high school. I think there were seventh grade, seventh graders and eighth graders in that school to fix their printer. And I went to fix the printer. And as I was leaving the computer lab, again, early twenties, early twenties, as I was leaving the computer lab, a little gaggle of girls, like three or four girls. Not far away from me. They weren't being discreet at all. Were pointing and laughing at me. And one of them ran up to me and said, Is that really hair? <laughs> and then laughed even more and ran away from me. And that's when I decided that my thinning hair, I had like, like a bald spot on top of my head, my thinning hair was no good. And rather than trying to do the horrible comb over thing, I just shaved it all off. Like I went back to the office. And I said to my friend Nick, who was working there, hey, Nick, you know how you make fun of me that I should shave my head? Let's do it. And he had his clippers, so he shaved my head like the, at around 6 o'clock at night after our, after our work hours were done, and I've never gone back. And I feel like this is a far better look for me than the thin hair that I used to have. And you're lucky because you never have to worry about bad hair days on camera. True. That's true. true. I, That's I've very so true. Many days where I want to film, but I'm like, wait, my hair looks <laughs> Honestly, sometimes my hair is just, like, sticking up. <laughs> I mean, I used to have that. I used to have exactly that experience, Mel. Uh, and weirdly, weirdly, sometimes I'll wake up and it's like, you know how if you, if you lose a limb, you have sympathetic pains for that limb? Sometimes I'll wake up and I'll feel that my hair is sticking off. I don't have any hair in my head, but it, I can feel it right there. Oh. 
That's how I felt the first time I cut it, because I had, like, really long hair, um, just, like, last year, and then I cut it all off, and I would, like, be doing this, going mm. to push it out of the way, and I, I wouldn't have any. So. Yeah. I used to have, like, those flippy bangs like this, and so after I cut it and, like, started putting it up like this, I just kept doing this for, like, a good, like, three more months. <laughs> <laughs> it was problematic. <laughs> <laughs> I once tried bangs too, but it looked hideous. Because <laughs> yeah. they were all curly and I didn't bother straightening them. It was a mess. <laughs> I feel the girls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to plug my computer in because it's gonna die. I wanna look at everybody's I wanna look at everybody's um, lower thirds here. So Francie, how does this thing even hilarious? Um Rowan got her Twitter name in there. Karen thinks that she's cool. I think so. <laughs> Lindsay is from Massachusetts. I have even I don't even know how to do that. Oh, uh, if you go to the right side of your screen, some icons should pop up, um, and one of them is a little toolbox thing that says uh, "Hangouts Toolbox." I say the right left side of your screen. I meant left side of your screen. Um, I got it. Uh, you can you can try you can try figuring out how to do the lower thirds there. Uh, Peter Peter Monster is a wizard. <laughs> uh, Peter the wizard. Sarah Ray and I'm in Washington D.C. This is a nice crowd here. How much do we have? We have uh, there's eight of us. That's so cool. Yay! Yay! I wonder what's up with Emily. She was trying to join earlier. She was. She... Something's wrong with her laptop, and I feel so bad. Wait, which yeah. Emily? <laughs> Emily Eaton. Yeah, oh, okay. there's so many. Oh, oh she's here. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Hi. Emily, you're here. Can you hear us? Emily, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Yay. Yay. Hey, what's like awesome about you? That mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I figure if I'm going to be a wizard, maybe I should get myself a fancy wizard hat. <laughs> you can, like, no. draw. And now it's gone. Oh. Yeah, you do. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rolly Joe. I don't know what's going on with your, with your setup. Oh, <laughs> I like that we've just been joined by some new people in the comments who will clearly just come into this mess. Like, <laughs> <"What's up?" laughs> we are. Well, I'm glad it was funny for everybody. That's good. <laughs> I'm just laughing at the comments now. They're like, well, that is a noise. <laughs> mouse in sneakers. Paul, here's yes. a cake for you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pirate Francie. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> the the chat makes it look like an obvious Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. This is uh, quite the party. It was quite the party. It is quite the party, and uh, that was exciting. Whatever happened to Emily? I, I, think they should, I think she might have thought that it was her fault for the noise and disconnected, maybe. Uh, so I'm gonna tweet it. I'll tweet at her and tell her it wasn't. Thank you. Okay, so let's see. Who've got still on We got. We still have Sarah, Peter, Mel, Lindsay, Karen, Rowan, Francie, and Emily is trying again to join us. Yeah, I am. I'm trying. Oh, okay. No, no, okay. I do think I do hear I an echo hear on your your side, echo. Emily. Yeah. Okay. Try plugging yeah. in headphones. Do you have headphones? headphones? Do you have headphones? Yes, I do. Earbuds? And Orla is and joining Orla us again. Is joining I'm us. back. I'm back. Hey, I can hear you. Can you hear me with SBs? Can you hear me with SBs? I do. I, yeah. I think it's uh, I, do. I, okay. I, I hear uh, an echo, which might be for Emily's, but yes. Oh my god, what is happening, Peter? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Every time I look over at Karen's mustache, oh. though, I'm, I just smile. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out. 
Oh, like, wow. Whoa. Ooh, Why is someone taking a picture? I don't know. I think <laughs> I took the wrong thing. Oh, oops. Oh, oh my gosh. And they also forget. All right, I give up. I don't know what I clicked. I think I broke it. <laughs> I think I've just clicked on too many random things and now I have like no idea what's going on. Same. Oh my god. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a little bit glad that at least wasn't me that time. Francia, did you just set off like an applause? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be like a laugh track as well. <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> I'm so um, confused. Why can't I see anyone anymore? Um, Amber asks in the chat, how many people can be in the video and hang out at once? And Everyone. just over dude answers oh, no. 10. Oh, no. We are so, at 10 now. We are at 10 now. We're at 10 I'm, right now. I'm going to argue that 10 is maybe also not the right number. <laughs> it's physically 10, but... I feel like 10... I feel like it's like when you get a bag of chips and it tells you like the serving size. It's like you should do ten, but like you <laughs> don't, don't. It just, uh, it's just not going to be a good thing. Except no, the opposite, because you know when I say say something says serves three people and I eat the whole thing myself, so it's exactly yeah. the opposite with hangouts. <laughs> it says it can serve ten people, but really it's more like six. Right. Uh, yeah, and sometimes it'll be like serving size is ten, and there's like thirty in a bag. Yeah, or five people fit in a car, but you can easily fit eight in it. You shouldn't, <laughs> but you can. I this, can. This feels a little bit like eight people in a car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, is I see the cat joined us, but I don't see cat. Cat, are you there? I'm having I'm having Hello? issues. Hang on. Okay. So cat will be joining us momentarily. Can, can oh, you hear me? Can everyone else like see? Yeah. yeah. Someone. I can't. I don't know what's going on. Stop with the camera! Oh, am I there? Can we see me? Yeah. Am I appeared? Yes! Yeah. Yes! Hey, there you Ooh. are. Victorious! Yay! Oh my god, I'm <laughs> 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 This is definitely where we should where we should cap things until someone is ready to leave, maybe to do their homework, and then I'll get <laughs> going in. Oh, okay. oh, Have we well, reached like hangout some... capacity? Yes, ten yeah. people is the hangout capacity. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, that was really funny though. Even though it was just awkward as heck. <laughs> <laughs> This is, like, so fun. I'm glad. I'm glad. That is the whole point of this. I want this to be a party for everybody. Yeah. I see that Amber is in the chats, and uh, Amber, you know, I, I definitely will want you in here. Um, at some point, somebody's going to want to leave, and then I will I'll let you yeah. know. You should join I think I'm going to get I'm gonna get going. i got got a lot of homework to do. Okay. All right. Okay. So, Thanks for joining uh, us, Karen. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 I am I'm definitely put into like connection. subscribing to everyone here after this. Everyone who I'm not already subscribed to. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, let's see here. So we have one space open if somebody else wants to join in. Uh, that could be Mouse and Sneakers, Bridget, or Amber and stuff. Uh, let's see here. I think those are really the only ones who are... And Chelsea, if you Chelsea or Chelsea, basically whoever's for, whoever jumps in first, <laughs> tag, first come first serve gone wrong. The race. <laughs> uh, and Fran has joined the uh, chat. Hooray! Hi, Fran. Yay! Yay. Where Yay. is the chat? Like, I'm so I confused know. about where these oh, things are happening. Uh, open like <laughs> the Google Hangout, like in YouTube. Open, open like what we're doing right now, like in YouTube, and then you can see the comments and just mute it. I explained that very badly. <laughs> <laughs> I'll so figure it you, out. Uh, the, the link that I've been tweeting out publicly to everybody, if you go to that link in a window, uh, then you'll be able to see this as a viewer. And uh, as a okay. viewer, you can see all the chats uh, on the side of the video. Alrighty, I think I got that. 
Oh, good question. Amber asks if Emily is going to try again. If if Emily Eaton is watching and worried, <laughs> yeah, none of this none of this is your fault, Emily. Don't feel bad. Yeah. This is just like a, a chaos. It just happened <laughs> at the yeah. same time as you're talking. I I feel like I may have broken it slightly with just I am now here. <laughs> Boom! Oh, you got Amber. Oh. Amber Glamour. Hi, Amber. That's a fantastic name. <laughs> oh my god, I love your hair. Yeah. Am I yeah, here? Really cool, Amber. Oh, and you match your walls, really which is really quite cute. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I got like two different sets of conversations in my ears. Hello, I am here. Hi, Amber. You're here. Hello. Oh. And I realize that since these, the last three people who have joined our uh, hangout, um, we have not told your information to everybody. So let's start off with Amber. Ah. Amber, can you tell us about uh, your name? your channel, and where you are calling in from, please. Okay. Uh, my name is Amber. My channel is Amber and Stuff. Um, what, just about my channel, or just what? Sure. Sure. Um, I just vlog and stuff, and my, my Google Plus is linked to my beauty channel for some reason. I don't know how that happens, so I always pop up as Amber Glamour, so I'm just like, hey. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. And I'm calling in from Northern California. Oh, yeah. Fellow Californian, right here. Hey. Yeah, I'm up in Grass Valley slash Sacramento area, so. Hey. hey. Oh, yeah, oh. Sacramento. I always just say Northern California because it's like, where's Sacramento even? Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that because my knowledge of geography is horrible. Yeah. Um, and then let's see here. Cat was before Amber, and tell us about you and your YouTube life and where you were calling in from. I am from. Uh, northern UK, all the way from over here, uh, in case you couldn't tell. Um, I, I mean, I have a channel. My channel is Tibicoy, um, but I very rarely actually post anything. There's some random bits and pieces on there, um, but that may or may not change. I do random things that I feel like doing. There's no consistency. It's just <laughs> things. Whereabouts in the north are you from, Kat? Near York. Nice! Yorkshire, represent. <laughs> my dad's from. Yay! Um, and then uh, before that was Orla, who has a good microphone set up now. Hooray! Hooray! Oh, no more bees! Hey. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Orla. Uh, my YouTube channel is Orla Joe Not Dead. Um, and I do, I don't know, lots of stuff. I start off like with booktubing. And I still do some book reviews, but mostly it ends up being like politicsy stuff more often than book reviews these days. Yeah. And where are you oh, I'm from, from? Dublin. Yeah, Dublin. Oh, cool. Awesome. Paul Talks two year anniversary is worldwide. Ha <laughs> ha. We do have, and I, I, never, I realize it's not actually worldwide yet. I don't think I'm gonna have anybody coming in from Japan. Although I asked someone, I don't have a, I don't have anybody coming in from Africa. Um, but I do have someone who, a couple of people may be joining us from Australia, probably near the end. Oh, cool! Oh, wow! Ooh. Nice. Yay, time wow. zones. <laughs> Yay, time zones. Yes. Exactly. Yay. Uh, and if if uh, Emily Eaton is watching this, please like tweet me or whatever <laughs> if you wanna yeah, <laughs> put back in. <laughs> at some point, at some point, I would like for there to be an online squad assembly of Mel, Emily Eaton, and Emily Hatfield. That that needs to happen here. That would be the best. I think Emily uh, Hatfield said that she was going to be on at like 1.30 her time. So that's like an hour from now. Cool. Cool. Yeah, time zones like are tripping me up because I know she was like. I it. Oh wait, yeah, you I was. It. Oh, I was almost going to tweet out, like, what time I was going to be on here, but really, I don't know, like, when I'm coming in. I was almost tweeting it out, and I'm like, wait, I'm using my time, and it's, like, e it's supposed to be East Coast time. This, it's just confusing, so it's, like, 10.30 where I am right now. In time the time. morning? Yep. Yeah, in the morning. Oh, same. all right. Yeah, because that's how that works. Sorry, I said such a backwards. I was like, no, it must be nighttime there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is 1.30 for me. Um, uh, in the afternoon. Oh my goodness! And yes, yeah, so uh, so because of Australia being on the opposite side, they're going to be joining in probably as they're waking after they wake up, uh, which will be at the end of this 
stream of mine. <laughs> uh, Emily says in the chat that she's back and doesn't know what happened. A Emily, we are now uh, at capacity at the moment, but as soon as somebody needs to leave for homework, because I know, I know that a couple more people need to leave for homework, <laughs> um, we can have you come back in. Well, as we recently established, it's like 10.30 here, and I just woke up, and I haven't had my coffee yet. So I'm probably going to run off and top off, uh, but I'll be back later, maybe, uh, later okay. tonight. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Bye, Peter. Bye. 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 Nice briefly meeting you. <laughs> I'm procrastinating the heck out of my homework right now. <laughs> like, wait, I have to do this. Same. Homework's not. No, important. yeah. I pretty much have to finish the end of uh, my thesis has to basically be in on um, either Monday or Tuesday, and I haven't finished the conclusion. And I'm just like, just leave it. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> What's your thesis about? Uh, Jewish American literary themes in wartime comic books. Fantastic. That sounds great. Oh, no, my lower third's disappeared. Damn. So, uh, how old is everyone here? Oh, I'm a child. <laughs> I'm only 14. I'm the youngest here, but... Oh, oh. that's adorable. Uh -huh. Everybody, all. <laughs> uh, how about you, uh, Amber? If you want to, you don't have to say your age, but if you uh, want to say your age, I, I yeah. look like I'm 14, but I'm 21. <laughs> Francie? Um, I turned 23 just recently, so. Yeah. Happy recent birthday. Okay. <laughs> Rowan, if you want to. Uh, 23 as well. Yeah. Cat. <laughs> 23. Okay. Obviously, Taylor Swift wrote a song about the wrong year because yeah. <laughs> that is the winner. Everybody's right now. 23. I genuinely forgot how old I was and had to remember by thinking to myself, Rowan, you sang Taylor Swift's 22 last year. You're 23 this year. Like, that's how I remember how old I was. Nice. I, I am currently wearing socks that say very special 21 year old on. Um, <laughs> everybody. Lindsay? I will be 21 in July. Oh. Whoa. Well, I get, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> what God. happened? Something is going to really wrong. I, I was figuring out how to draw stuff. I tried that, and then I failed, so I just gave up. I honestly need to It's stop. so distracting. It's brilliant. Oh, no. I've opened everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mel, did you want to share how old you are, or should we skip you? Oh, I'm 16, so I'm, like, with Sarah in the youngness here. Yeah. You know, there is a YouTuber's panel at uh, VidCon, at least there was last year, and it was excellent. Yeah, there's a young YouTuber's panel, and I've been, like, wanting to see, like, if there's an audition or something. Sabrina probably hates me. She's the one who did it last year, right? She's the one who started it. Uh, and I've been, like, messaging her on Tumblr and tweeting at her, like, is there going to be a young YouTubers panel? Because I would kill to be a part of that, and I'm pretty sure she hates me. <laughs> yeah, I auditioned for it last year, and I don't know if they're going to do auditions again this year, because they haven't said anything about it. Hmm. Yeah, hmm. I don't think they are, but I'm still going to that if it's a thing. Yeah, same. Cool. I will go to support it. Um, Orla Joe, did you want to share your age? Oh, I'm 22. Hey! So, hey. I, I just had my Taylor Swift's birthday. <laughs> um, awesome. That's brilliant. But, I'm I mean, 23-year-olds do have the Blink-182 song. So, oh, that's at nice. least there, there is a song for 23. Yeah. Brilliant. And I am an old, old man. I am turning 40 this year. Ages. Silence. <laughs> <laughs> There's you no fun songs about like that. <laughs> there, there should be. I feel like there should be like a there catchy. There's probably country songs about uh, turning forty, which just tells yeah. you how sad it is. Yeah. No, I mean I'm just thinking a little more beat. You know, kind of like there should be like a pop punk ballad to turning forty. Yeah. We should write one right now. Yeah. That, I'll, I'll ask my friends and static cadets to do it. Yes! Oh, yes! Yeah. Are they joining at any time? Um, Haley and Taylor will be joining at some point. Yes. Um, if we get static cadets to do this, like, right now. They should all just join and do a performance for us. That would be awesome, actually. 
Can you imagine the lag? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> well, I mean, if they're all in the same place, they can oh, all yeah, be in the same. Um, I have tried to do like singing across Skype before. Hmm. No, no. So it depends what kind of music you do, because if it was like an electronica, you could use the lag as an effect. <laughs> that would be cool, yeah. Yeah. Harmonize with yourself. La, 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 la. <laughs> <It's a lag. laughs> this one time, Emily Hatfield and I were trying to learn um, duet, by, duet with Myself by Charlie McDonald, because we were going to play it at VidCon, and we were both going to play our ukuleles at the same time, and we tried practicing it, and we just failed terribly. <laughs> Amber, you hit twice. I was hit twice? <laughs> yes. Did anyone else see Amber twice, or is it just me? Yeah. No, 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 there were no, two Ambers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know why, because like, something tried to open, and then my whole browser crashed, so I just came back. Oh, no. I well, ejected the second one. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was able to eject the other, the ghost Amber. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's, the, it's the capture thing that's crashing it for me. What is that even? That's oh yeah. Awesome. You just gotta, it, don't click turn camera off, just click the little X or else it goes haywire. That happened to me a minute ago. Alright. <laughs> oh no, I didn't do my lower third. Hang on. My dog's going crazy, so I'm gonna go uh, downstairs, but someone else can take my place in this for a while. It's really nice to see you guys. Nice to see you. Hello, Hi. Hi. Oh, I don't know how to get out. <laughs> there should be a, um, a red hang-up symbol at the top of the there screen. There is not. Oh, it's come back again. It's okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Excellent. And I'll let the people in the chat know. Oh, thanks, Fran. Fran says that I look youthful. Thank you, Fran. <laughs> Aww. Who are you? Beautiful. I agree with that. Yeah. Youthful, not beautiful. Youthful. <laughs> <You're fine. laughs> All of the above. <laughs> yeah. Is it this like what everyone's parents are afraid of though, talking to forty year old men on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yes. And um, I actually did like a. Uh, I think it was in. I think it was in these. Uh, what is it? Safety community pledge. Shoot. Safer community pledge. That's what it's called. I did a safer community pledge video, um, wherein I think that I specifically said. You should not trust YouTubers <laughs> just because you see them on YouTube all the time. And I stand by that, including myself. You know, if I if I act because I'm confident that I'm not going to do this. If I were to ask for you to do something that is sketchy, you should not trust me because a oh, no. that wouldn't be me. I wouldn't be doing that. Uh, and b just because I seem like a good guy on YouTube doesn't mean I'm a good guy off of YouTube. So yeah, don't don't trust people. Don't trust forty year olds on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I don't know many 40-year-olds on YouTube. I don't know many 14-year-olds on YouTube, but I don't know many 40-year-olds either. Well, apparently we're all 23, so... Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a... Yeah. <laughs> Someone's joining! And oh, Bridget has joined us. Hi! Hi! That was the most stressful moment of my life. <laughs> I just connected? I the entire Google Plus account, and it tried to get me to add, like, 80 people from my high school. And I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> skip, 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 skip. Oh, this is interesting. Ooh, it's like a whole so, new world. Yes. So, Bridget, what I've been doing when, as everybody joins in is... Wait, has, wait, did somebody just turn into a stuffed animal? <laughs> <laughs> is that Rue? Yeah, that's Rue. Because that's my nickname, so that's my, like... Oh, that's, that's, that's adorable. Um, so as everybody has been joining Bridget, I've been asking them to tell us their name, uh, mm -hmm. about, about their channel, and where they are connecting from. Okay, I can do that. Uh, my name is Bridget. Uh, my channel is Mouse in Sneakers, um, and it's kind of a random hodgepodge... Oh. Sarah Ray opened capture. Ah, what? Okay, yeah, don't panic. Your, your video will come back. <laughs> what did I do? It's the last thing you see before you There you go. I feel it. like a grandmother. <laughs> no, I'm just messing everything up. Also, I have a little haul with me. Oh, Aww. Aww. oh Emily's back. <laughs> Emily! Emily! Welcome back. Hi, Emily. <laughs> I I love that if somebody watches if somebody watches the video of this 
portion of my show afterwards, they'll just see Emily popping in every once in a while, saying <laughs> a couple of words and then disappearing again. Oh, that's why I felt bad taking that last slot. I was like, can I come in? Because I, w- I wasn't sure if like Emily was still trying to come in. <laughs> Sorry. It's uh, all right. Hopefully you will stick, stick with us for a little while this time. Um, i uh, Bridget was... I'm sorry, I think I interrupted you because I saw Rue. But no, Bridget, okay. you, you were going to tell us uh, your name, what channel, and where you're from. Right on. Uh, yeah, I'm Bridget. My channel is Mouse in Sneakers, and I kind of do a random hodgepodge of stuff. Um, I do a lot of traveling, so I make a lot of like travel vlogs, and I also really like to tell stories. So um, I do that as well on my channel. I tell stories, which is pretty fun. And um, I'm tuning in from Vancouver, British Columbia. Canada. I'm visiting yeah, Canada. there next week. <laughs> I'm going there next week. Oh, are you? Yeah. Well, uh, for any reason or just because it's cool? Uh, visiting my friend. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. That's exciting. That is exciting. It's a pretty I, cool place. Yeah, I'm excited. Yes. Can I just say how convenient it is to see, see like everyone's name on here? Because otherwise, like. Yeah. This is why it's better than a real party, because I don't have to ask your names. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree. That's true. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then Emily. I want to get the lower third. Mm-hmm. Oh, um, you can get the lower third, uh, Bridget, by going to the left side of your screen. You'll have some icons pop up. Mm-hmm. And there's one that looks like a toolbox, and that's called the Hangouts Toolbox. Ooh, okay. So that's where you'll find it. It's the um the first the little thing that looks like a circle around a profile f- uh, uh, photo. I think I did it. Um, and then you have to turn it on, and then you might want to mirror it if you if it looks weird backwards to you. While Bridget is working on that, Emily. Yes. Oh, is my mid back? You've been on here for a while now. This is great. You haven't disconnected. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, it's a miracle. <laughs> um, Emily, can you tell us uh, your name uh, about your channel and where you are connecting from? Yes, um, I am from Essex in England, and on my channel I basically just do whatever I want. I don't really know what I'm doing on it. I just talk about stuff. You do just talk about stuff, but I've been I still here? I've been labeling everybody as being a part of the geeky social issues crowd, and I think you're a part of it as well. I would say so. Hooray. Oh gosh! Wow, it is uh, um, 1:42, and we are still going strong. How wonderful! Let's yeah. see here. I have to go and plug in my computer. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to mute my microphone. Uh, Emily Hatfield has joined us from in the chats, in the chat. Oh yay! And says that I look like I'm 28. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, you do look like you're 28. Yeah, I, thought, I did think you were like. Yeah. 30. I actually just saw an article on. I think it was shared on Facebook about how um, an Asian guy from Jurassic Park looks the same 20 years later <laughs> from the Jurassic World sequel. Nice. And like, uh, nice. yeah, Asians don't age. Uh, <laughs> don't you know that? <laughs> Ooh, I can put filters. I can make myself look so much better. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't answered a question in like a while. We've just been screwed up. Just entertaining ourselves. That's all right. Fun. Uh, do people, That's the people right. are watching and are in the chats on this video, please ask us more questions. We'll be happy to answer them. Yeah. Do, do, do. That eyebrow, Yay. though. We're back in HD. I don't know if you're with this. Because I don't really, I got really comfortable. What just happened? Did Emily disappear again? Oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Aww. Doing so well. I feel really bad for Emily. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Emily. Uh, what's happening with Bridget? I'm <laughs> 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 just having a grand old time. <laughs> <laughs> that is that's fantastic. I'm sorry. Hold on. I'll, are, you making, I'll... are you making yourself a mouse? Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. With really weird weird lipstick, apparently. Can you put some cheese <laughs> in there as well? Yes. Hold on. I can make that happen. 
<laughs> I'm so jealous. I can't get draw to work on mine. Oh no, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay, this doesn't look like cheese. It looks like well, I don't really know, but. <laughs> <laughs> I have the oh. Dorothy's laugh. I'm so sorry. Just a floating. Everybody's laugh is wonderful. Cheese, right here. There's a little yellow poop next to Bridget that she's calling cheese. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and um. Oh no. Paul, what's your Instagram? I want to see the photos that you're posting of this. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, you're posting oh, pictures. It's uh, just Paulidin. P a u l i d i n. I love how whenever. I love how whenever Paul talks. Wait, sorry. I love how whenever Paul talks, you can just see his dog looking over and like judging him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very <laughs> true to life. <laughs> These two photos are, are just of me making like the ugliest face. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Sarah, you're adorable. Yeah, I I I stand by these photos. These are great. It was an accident. They're they're both you, Sarah. That did not. That was not intentional. <laughs> I didn't know they. That works. That's all right, though. Um, Taylor has said that she and Haley will be joining us soon, but of course, it's going to have to have to wait for um, uh, spaces in the, the panel here. Uh, this is like a panel. I like that. I like that we're a panel. Yeah. Here. An international YouTubers panel. Speaking of panels, so who of us are going to to VidCon? I definitely oh. am. I am. Yeah. Me too. Me nope. too. I am not. This is sad, guys. I want to go so bad. Aww. But I don't know if I can. So I'm I think so that's. Excited. It's going to be my first VidCon. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> Yay! Yay. Nice. So it looks like um, Bridget, Kat, and Lindsay aren't going to be able to make it to VidCon, but I'll see the rest of you there, which is very exciting. Mm -hmm. I'm not going there either. <laughs> oh, and Amber. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Aw. Uh, you know what? I. Um, I adore Amber. Amber and Chelsea, uh, who was with Amber uh, at VidCon, were just the sweetest people to me. They were so <laughs> nice to me. And at one point, uh, I, re I specifically remember that during the VidCon prom at the, on the last day, I was trying to like find some friends that I thought I was supposed to meet up with, but I couldn't find them, so I thought maybe they ditched me, and I was feeling kind of bad about that. But like Chelsea and, 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 um, and Amber just came up to me and said, come on, we're going to dance. Yeah. They me out on the dance floor, and we started dancing, yeah. and it was awesome. <laughs> Awesome, sweet. Hello, party. It was good. Yeah. When are you going to arrive in LA? I should be there on the twenty uh, second, so I'll be there before the official festivities start, so I can check into my hotel yeah. and like get used to the time zone. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry I couldn't drive you. By the way, that would just be kind of illegal. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Paul asked me on Twitter to like if I could drive him to VidCon because I live here. Uh, I, I'm only like 45 minutes away from Anaheim, so I was like, I can't drive. Whoops. <laughs> That's <laughs> all right. Maybe maybe uh the static cadets are gonna take a van and I'll go in. <laughs> I think yeah, so Katie who, and who Katie two aren't going though. Speaking of. Aww. Aww. Let's see here. Um, let's see. Any uh, anything new in the chats? I do not see anything new in the chats. Um, <laughs> speaking of Kika Marie, she just tweeted that they're going to do a new wave song interpretation where they just cough for ten minutes and they slam poetry, <laughs> and that's going to be their ode to turning forty. Well, thanks, thanks, Kika Marie. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. If this doesn't happen, I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah, me too. Yeah, so wait, Paul, who is this band that you keep talking about? They're uh, amazing. That's what they are. <laughs> they are a pop-punk band out of California, near, but I'm not sure how near to L.A., and uh, I know two of the members, Taylor and Haley, sisters, um, because they are YouTubers, and I oh. met both of them during not this most recent Project for Awesome, but the previous Project for Awesome. They both had uh, really good fundraiser videos up, uh, and so I started following them then. And then I encountered them at VidCon 2014, and they were very cool as well. Um, and that's basically it. I, I, I listened to their music. Pop punk music isn't my favorite necessarily. It's not like my style, but because like, I like jazz, and I like regular yeah. pop. Um, 
but I can't I can't deny that they are an excellent band. They're great. Cool. I'll have to listen cool. to them. Mm-hmm. Oh goodness, uh, Chelsea has left the chat, uh, but we'll be back soon. Terrific. Uh, I feel like there was I feel like there was something that somebody had tweeted at me that they wanted me to talk about before this even began, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, no. um, meanwhile, if any of you have questions that you would like the group to answer, including myself, feel free to ask it. So I will definitely be back, but I uh, have to go get lunch. I'm kind of hungry and uh, also run some errands with my mom to get stuff that I need. So uh, I'll be back. I don't know. I'll tweet when I'm going to be back. <laughs> awesome. If there's any room. Convince <laughs> Emily to come back. <laughs> yes. So, All right, we'll see you bye. later, Sarah. Bye, bye. Sarah. Bye. 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 Nicole Sweeney has joined us in the chat. Sweeney says, happy YouTube anniversary. Well, thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Hi. Uh, Nicole, Twe- I know Nicole Sweeney of Sweeney Says. Um, again, from like doing social issues vlogs on YouTube, I think I first met her th- during a VEDA August, a vlog every day in August, I think. Um, and I've been following her on YouTube for a while. She's great. She talks... Of all the YouTubers, of all the YouTubers I follow, I think Nicole Sweeney talks the fastest, <laughs> faster than me, faster than John Green and Hank Green. So wow. fast talker. Wow, that's saying something. And uh, and Nicole's a bit of a success story in you know YouTube as it were because she went from being a vlogger who knew about the Vlog Brothers to working at it DFTBA. I believe that she does like production stuff for Brain Scoop and. SciShow, mm-hmm. maybe? I feel like that's right. Well, Brand Scoop so cool. isn't DFTBA that's anymore. Amazing. Oh, it's not. Oops. Yeah. But um, maybe in the past, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's cool. Is anybody doing VEDA in April this year? Yeah. I want to so badly, but I'm going to be in Russia for the first oh. 11 days, and it's going to be weird and, you know, hard to yeah. upload and stay in Russia. <laughs> If you're yeah. going to be in Russia, you can just do your VEDA from a dashboard cam, because apparently those are on all the cars. Yeah. <laughs> That's the new plan. <laughs> Do you have a schedule to um, organize your videos here in Vida, or? Uh, well, for me, I always like film it a day before. Like I've never tried pre-filming, but I might this year. I'm not sure. I don't know. Vida. I wrote down some topics I want to talk about on special dates. For example, the Game of Thrones premiere. Mm-hmm. Oh. And, uh, Day after. <laughs> Orphan Black is coming back too. I'm so oh, black. Yeah. <laughs> um, there are some there are some vlogging groups do uh, that have like a calendar of topics that you could do for Veda if you wanted to do that. Um, okay. I don't remember the URLs off the top of my head, but I'm pretty sure if you just search for Veda April topics, you'll probably be able to find the page. Mm-hmm. Uh, apparently, I got some. I got some of my information about Nicole Sweeney wrong. Oops. Uh, it's Crash Course. She works with Crash Course. That's what it there is. Darn it! Can I really be blamed for confusing the shows that I previously associated with DFTBA? <laughs> oh goodness. Um, some just some German dude asked the question. Um, what do we think about bookstores turning into? YouTube, but with paper. I think that that's a question about what do we think about YouTubers getting book deals. I think that's what that question is. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Sarah, who just left, had like a really good video about that. She oh, did. Really? Yeah. Um, so if you if you are not subscribed to probably underscore Sarah on YouTube, she can you can check her out. She's done. You know, she, fourteen year old for crying out loud. A fourteen year old is doing <laughs> videos that I, I would be proud to have on my channel. So. Awesome. <laughs> Her videos are so much better than mine were when I was fourteen. I don't. I didn't have internet when I was fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> yeah. Has anyone read any of the any of the YouTuber books? Um, I've read yeah. Hannah Hearts. I've read Hannah's and Grace's. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't think I, I've read have, any of them. I have Hannah's and, and Grace's, but otherwise I don't have any of them. Hmm. 
nor have I read it, any of them. I've I've seen Alfie Day's one, like yeah. in a copy of, I mean, but I haven't uh, got it or really read much of it. What is it like a, a pointless book? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Apparently, it's quite similar to the wreck my journal type books. Yeah. 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 yeah, Kind of random pages of like things to do and various like activity kind of randomness things. Yeah. Interesting. I think I think for me, it depends depends on scandal on. with what's her name, Zoella, where like yeah. oh, you know, yeah. like mm. it was ghost written. Dun dun dun. Yeah. The amount of books that are ghost written who aren't by YouTubers yeah. who have of publishing, yeah. like, it wasn't that crazy of a thing to happen. Like, yeah. so many professional writers, you have ghostwriters, so it wasn't that crazy. But yeah. That's kind of sad, I think. I mean, I, I think it was the, the way problem it was kind with... of described, though. Exactly, yeah. yeah. The problem with the Zoella's book coming out was mm -hmm. that she uh, purports herself, especially on her vlogs, to be very honest uh, and sharing with her viewers. Um, and upfront about stuff, and then she says that she has this book and she's very excited about it, and then she doesn't mention any, any, at any point that she didn't write it. It's yeah. her book. It's definitely her book because, you know, in the publishing industry, it's very common for someone to be, to own a book, as it were, but also have a ghostwriter, so that's legitimate enough, but mm -hmm. she didn't tell her viewers who are used to her mm -hmm. being, you know, honest and forthcoming with them uh, about it, and so that felt like a bit, a, bit of a, a bit of a betrayal of honesty. If she had just told everybody, hey... I'm excited about this book that was ghost written, uh, you know, about my ideas. Then everything would have been fine. Yeah. 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 I agree. Do you think it would have sold as well? Uh, I think it would have sold. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, you, well. when you have when you have over a million subscribers, I think that you have yeah. such a fan base that yeah. there's very little that you can do wrong. I mean, you can actually do actual wrongdoings. Yeah, that's still, a good point. Sell tons of stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, not not books about the uh, London Underground. Everything else. Though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was. Yeah. Wow. Did that work? <laughs> I was like, direct attack. direct attack. Did that book ever work out for him? Because like, clearly, I don't watch. I him think anymore, I think like... I remember hearing that his publisher dropped him. No, but I think. Good choice. Um, it's going to be published. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I oh, read really? it somewhere. Uh, that, it's gonna be sad. Something happened with publishing. It wasn't. It didn't go through with his original plan. He had books that he hawked on his YouTube video on his YouTube channel within this last uh, year. So oh, really? something's happening. Yeah. But I love how his view count went down from one hundred thousand to twenty thousand. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's the only satisfaction I get. That's still like twenty thousand people watching yeah. him though. So. Yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's worrying, but it's. I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like that is a situation where, as close to, a wide variety of the YouTube communities plural, spoke out about him. Yeah. Shared yeah. the information, yeah. on YouTube, on Tumblr, on Twitter, that it made a dent, and that that hasn't happened for everybody, sadly. But for for Alex Day, for whatever reason, it did actually make a dent, which is good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is good. Um, let's see here. Uh, Haley is in the chat saying that she will join in a minute. Hooray. Uh, my, friend, my friend Lizzie, who is a vlogger from California who is now in Italy, doing Italy for a, a good span of time, um, is in the chats. Hi, Lizzie. Hi. She now speaks very good Italian, at least to my non-Italian <laughs> speaking ear. Um, and like, I can't... Would you know that it was fluent or not? And you can just be like, yes, that sounds like Italian. <laughs> well, here's, here's, how, here's why I think that she speaks fluent Italian. At one point during one of her vlogs that she uploaded from Italy, she was speaking in English to the viewer, and then I think like a dog or a cat did something that annoyed her, and she turned and yelled at it in Italian. Oh, and that's 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 uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, according to Just Some German Dude, Just Some German Dude knows everything. Uh, as yeah, Just Some German Dude says yeah. the London Underground book got self published and apparently didn't do that badly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh well. Um, ba, 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 ba. Sydney <coughs> says that YouTube keeps recommending Alex Day's videos. Ah, uh, that keeps so cool. yeah. like, Don't show me that. I, I blocked it eventually. So you, because I forget where it is, but there's an option that you can say like, "Don't show me these channels." Um, oh really? Somewhere in the settings. Yeah, I, I forget exactly where it is, but there's 
I think it might be on the channel name in the like about section, you know, in the bio of it. Mm. I think there's a oh, block well you can block user, option yeah. in there. Yeah, and that okay. stops it appearing in your recommended. Hmm. I will do that. Yeah, kind of nice. That's happened like eight times, and I'm like, I don't want this here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, from me. I, I don't usually say that there's positive things about Facebook, but one thing that Facebook does do well is that if you see something in your feed, you can say that you don't want to see that anymore. Yeah. And then sure. you can like refine and it just goes away. Yeah. how you don't want to see it. Like, I don't want to see any more from this person. I want to unfollow them, whatever. Mm -hmm. That is excellent user experience, which YouTube should really reproduce. When there's a bit of that on Twitter as well. Twitter's not very good at keeping, if you block somebody, it's not very good at actually keeping them blocked, like some interactions still get through. Yeah. When well, that's you because they, they don't actually, they, they're they blocking on Twitter, unless they've changed it recently, is just masking, annoyingly enough. Yeah. So, like, um, you can't see their stuff, but they could still see your stuff if they look at your channel, mm -hmm. which uh, is, or your Twitter feed, which sucks. And I've complained about numerous on numerous occasions. Yeah, it's the same with Tumblr, too. Like, I tried to block people I know from my school, and, like, they can still go on my blog and follow me. I'm like, what's the point of this? Yeah. <laughs> they just can't send you mail, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tumblr is definitely needs definitely needs work. Come on, come on, Yahoo CEO who purchased Tumblr. <laughs> 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 uh, 